Good afternoon from the National Weather Service here in Albuquerque, New Mexico with a special weather briefing regarding two winter storms that will impact northern and central New Mexico through the end of the week. With me is uh, Royce Fontenot, Senior Service Hydrologist, and Alyssa Clements, who is one of our forecasters. So we have high confidence in a significant winter uh, impacts across uh, northern and central New Mexico, and we'll break this down. Uh, as we uh, go forward. So storm number one, this is primarily across central and eastern New Mexico and the primary focus will start later today or Wednesday afternoon and continue to worsen as we go into the Wednesday night through Thursday morning time frame. Warmer air will start making its way into the state um, on Thursday afternoon and so any of that freezing rain, sleet, and snow will most likely change over to rain for many areas, particularly in the lower elevations. But we do anticipate this activity will change over or remain as snow in the higher elevations. And then storm number two is anticipated across northern and western New Mexico as we go into Thursday night. And this will most likely continue into Friday and Friday night where the greatest impacts are expected to occur. We do anticipate moderate to heavy snow, uh, especially across the higher elevations, and this will certainly lead to some significant travel impacts across those areas. Things will start winding down late Friday night, but the winds will certainly be a concern on Friday and Friday night. And then this will also most likely continue uh, into Saturday as well, as even though the precipitation will be moving out of the region, some strong winds are expected across eastern New Mexico throughout the day on Saturday. So let's break this down into uh, storm number one. Again, this will be starting later today, particularly this afternoon and continuing through the overnight hours and into Thursday, where we do have the potential for freezing rain, snow, sleet, and also some flash freeze conditions where the temperatures are gonna drop below freezing and where uh, any precipitation that did fall on the ground will certainly freeze and create a thin layer of ice and that would be very significant impacts for travel. Greatest concern is certainly going to be across uh, the areas of the northern mountains where most likely it's going to remain as snow, but also the Rio Grande Valley, including the Albuquerque metro area, as well as the Santa Fe metro area, and certainly areas along and east of the central mountain chain are of greatest concern across those areas. This is areas from, let's say, Las Vegas over to Tucumcari, all the way further towards the south through Klein's Corners, Fort Sudmer, Clovis, and Roswell as well. So we do have uh, some confidence uh, metrics here. We do have uh, some uncertainty on the precipitation type for some of these areas, particularly across east, central, and southeast New Mexico, where some of this activity will initially start off as snow and potentially transition over to sleet and potentially freezing rain before it all changes over to rain. But the timing of that activity and what areas see sleet versus freezing rain is still up for debate at this current time. So I encourage you to stay up to date to the latest forecast. But regardless of what winter precipitation type you might receive, there will be significant travel impacts across the region and that will include portions of Interstate 25 as well as portions of Interstate 40 and US, uh, US 285 as well. So. Uh, the concern is not whether or not there will be travel impacts. There's very high certainty on that. It's just up for debate still on what precipitation type some areas of New Mexico might see. This is the official freezing rain forecast. The one in the middle is our official forecast, and the one on the left is the best case scenario, we'll say, where there'll be lower freezing rain accumulations, and on the right-hand side is a worst case scenario. So some good news here is we don't anticipate widespread significant accumulation over a quarter inch across our area. Probably what we're most likely going to face is somewhere in between the left graphic and the middle graphic. So somewhere of uh, let's say 500s to maybe upwards of a tenth of an inch certainly would be possible for the Sandia Manzano Mountains and areas to the east and southeast to see those accumulations. What's What's really important though to know is that it only takes a hundredth or two to create very slick road conditions across those areas. So regardless of the accumulations that you might uh, see in your areas, very slick road conditions will certainly be a concern as we go into Wednesday night and continuing into Thursday morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Alyssa here. She's gonna give us a play-by-play -play or at least a timeline of what we can anticipate for various locations across central and eastern New Mexico. Alyssa? 
Hey, thank you, Daniel. Um, so just to recap for a couple of select sites uh, across central and eastern New Mexico, uh, we'll start with Albuquerque, uh, where we are anticipating precipitation to begin as a rain-snow mixture uh, later on this evening and continuing through the uh, late, later evening hours. But as we continue overnight past midnight, a changeover to snow uh, does appear likely for the metro area with snow continuing uh, through the early morning to uh, later morning hours on Thanksgiving before warmer temperatures change over that precipitation type to rain. Uh, moving eastward into Tejeres, uh, precipitation will likely start out as snow uh, later on this afternoon, continuing as snow um, overnight into early Thanksgiving morning before again a changeover to rain is anticipated as temperatures warm on Thursday. Uh, moving further east into Santa Rosa, again, precipitation type is anticipated to begin as snow uh, later this afternoon, um, but a changeover to a wintry mix appears likely uh, early Thursday morning where we could see impacts from freezing rain or sleet, but again, as temperatures warm up um, early Thursday afternoon, that will change over to rain. And finally, moving further south into Roswell, the precipitation type is a bit trickier, uh, a mixture of snow and sleet appears most likely um, this evening, but as we move into the overnight hours, that precipitation type is anticipated to change over to freezing rain um, or sleet. That continues through uh, Thanksgiving morning before it changes over to rain um, as temperatures warm on Thursday. Great. Thanks, Alyssa. Greatly appreciate it. And as we mentioned earlier, we encourage you to stay up to date to the latest forecasts at weather.gov forward slash ABQ, because we do have some uncertainty still continuing in the forecast as to the precipitation type. Now we go into storm number two. This is coming quickly on the heels of storm number one. So this will be late Thursday night into Friday. And the primary focus is going to be across western and northern New Mexico, particularly in the higher elevations. So we do anticipate the threat for some significant travel disruptions along Interstate 40, as well as areas across, uh, let's say, U.S. Highway 64 and 285 in north central New Mexico. So certainly this will be an impact to the holiday travelers, as well as anybody that might be out for Black Friday or any workday commuting activities as well. As you look at our impact uh, for our confidence, the travel impacts will be moderate to high. It's mainly going to be primarily relegated to mid and upper elevations. Some of the lower elevations could see some slick travel conditions, but the greatest risk will certainly be above, let's say, 7,500 or 8,000 feet. But our precipitation type confidence is very high in this particular scenario. For storm number two, we're pretty confident that it is either going to be in the form of rain or most likely uh, going to be in the form of snow for most areas as well. So, And in the second storm, we're going to most likely rack up the the snow accumulations in the northern mountains where some areas could see well over a foot, particularly let's say Red River or Chama. So just combining the two events together, do use the graphic on the right with uh, some caution here for like let's say Klein's Corners. When you wake up on Saturday morning, you're not going to be looking at 8 to 12 inches of snow on the ground because we're going to get this in a one-two punch and in between the two storm systems, the temperatures are going to rise on Thursday. So some areas could actually see some significant melting during the day on Thursday before the storm system comes in on Friday and Friday night. But for other areas of our forecast area, let's say northern New Mexico, it's most likely going to stay snow through the entire event and it may not even end uh, between storm one and storm two. So these could be representative totals for the two, two events. And then flash freeze potential, uh, certainly for tonight, the Central Highlands, so like Raton down to Las Vegas, down to Klein's Corners, and maybe down to areas just west of Roswell, those rapid temperatures are going to drop off pretty quickly tonight, and that could lead to some freezing conditions on those road surfaces. So any liquid that accumulated on the roads could quickly freeze. And then once again, as that Pacific cold front sweeps west to east across the region Friday evening, we could also see some flash freeze conditions, which could be pretty hazardous to travel conditions. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass it over to Royce, who is going to give us a hydro briefing. And thank you, Daniel. So, uh, yeah, this is a very moist system coming through. So while we've been talking quite a bit about uh, freezing rain and snow uh, and, and some rain here in most of northern New Mexico, southwest New Mexico is going to see a very mixed precipitation type, lower elevations, particularly in the San Francisco River Valley, parts of the Gila River Valley are actually going to continue to stay all rain. 
Um, going through there, as Daniel mentioned on Thursday night in particular, we're going to start seeing snow levels increase while the system's coming through. So that lower elevation snow is going to start melting off, start changing the rain. So we're going to have some responses on areas, area streams and creeks down in, that, in the southwest part of the state. So here's an example. This is the hydrograph and the forecast for the San Francisco River below Glenwood. We're not expecting widespread river flooding. Matter of fact, you can see the forecast here. The river's coming up to about 8.2 feet, which is a pretty significant rise, considering the river right now is what we call base flow. It's normal, uh, fairly low flow situation. So we're not expecting river flooding. However, these rivers are going to start responding to the precipitation and then the snow melt. So our concerns are particularly with this rapid rise. Uh, on those rivers, again, you're going from kind of zero to 60, not quite to flood, but you're getting a significant rise. Low water crossings may be cut off. So if you're out there, you're recreating, you have some, some spots you like to cut across on some of the main stem rivers, be aware that going into the weekend hours as we warm up a little bit, start transitioning into uh, rain, certainly in the low to mid levels, we're going to start seeing some increased stream flow. For those going and doing recreation or hunting in the backcountry in the southwest part of the state, Catron County, uh, those areas really of concern about some of the back back uh, country streams and creeks as well. Be aware that they may rise significantly and become impassable. And also something to keep in mind here is the water's going to be cold. We're coming in with a mostly rain, you know, cold rain, snow type of system here. So the water temperature is going to be very cold. So be aware of hypothermia. Certainly that risk is there if you get yourself immersed. But stay tuned again to uh, weather.gov slash abq for our current forecast on the rivers. At this time, not anticipating a widespread flooding, but certainly please do uh, stay tuned to the forecast. All right, Royce, thanks a bunch. Appreciate that. And so as we go to our next slide here, we do have the potential for strong winds uh, continuing uh, on, or at least developing on Friday and continuing into Saturday as well. For Friday, it's going to be primarily a focus across the higher elevations as well as northeast New Mexico. And so those areas that are experiencing some, some snow, we could have some blowing snow, reduced visibility. So that could be uh, a hazardous travel condition as well, particularly across western and northern New Mexico on Friday. So impacts along Interstate 40 and U.S. Highway 6487. The wind direction is really going to be important on Friday. It's more of a southwest to northeast or maybe south to north. So those east-west oriented roads would be the roads of greatest concern, particularly in northeast New Mexico. And then on the graphic on the right is for the Saturday time frame. And do know that it is going to be windy even continuing Friday night. But for Saturday, it's going to be mainly focused across northeast, east central New Mexico. And the wind direction plays a factor here as well because it would be more of a west to east wind direction. So the north-south oriented roads would be at greater risk for hazardous travel conditions. And that would include Interstate 25 from, let's say, Raton down to Las Vegas, as well as U.S. Highway 285 in areas uh, near Klein's Corners. But things do improve as we go into Saturday night into Sunday. Some gradual warmings anticipated for early next week. Still below normal for many areas, uh, but certainly going to be better travel conditions across. It's uh, very important to remember winter safety awareness. Consider delaying your travel plans if at all possible. Stay tuned to the latest forecast. Find multiple ways to get the latest weather information as well, just in case you lose power in your particular location. And then probably one of the most dangerous things that we see is people getting out and driving in these winter travel conditions and they end up getting stuck and they don't have food water coats or blankets with them so make sure you have a winter survival kit in your vehicle if you do have to travel during this uh, uh, winter storm uh, scenario that we have for the next couple of days and before you get out on the road make sure you check nmroads.com or dial 511 for the latest road conditions uh, as well and then just as this is just a summary of the storm number one and storm number two, certainly deteriorating conditions across uh, northern and central New Mexico as we go into uh, late Wednesday afternoon and particularly Wednesday night. We do anticipate improving conditions for many areas except for the higher, higher terrain on Thursday afternoon. And then storm number two is coming in very quickly on its heels. And we do anticipate deteriorating conditions once again Thursday night and continuing into Friday and Friday night across northern and western New Mexico, where we'll primarily be, will be heavy snow concerns as, long, as well as strong winds. And gradual improving conditions as we go into Saturday, but we do need to be uh, concerned about strong crosswinds across eastern New Mexico. As always, you can stay up to date on the latest weather information at weather.gov forward slash abq. And we'll continue to keep the updates coming on Facebook and Twitter. 
and have a great and safe holiday weekend.